Hello, I'm Enzo and today I'll be playing Auction Not Included. And today we'll be going over Niobium and Tungsten Volcanoes. Niobium and Tungsten Volcanoes are two types of metal volcanoes that you'll find in Auction Not Included Spaced Out. Not the base game, but the DLC. These volcanoes are unlike any other volcano in the game. The liquid they produce is extremely hot. Almost 6,000 degrees for Niobium and almost 7,000 degrees for Tungsten. So the real question is, how do you use these? Although these volcanoes output extremely hot liquid, they don't produce very much. I'm using the average calculated output mod to find the average output of these volcanoes. As you can see here, the tungsten volcano only outputs around 330 a second. It depends on your volcano, but tungsten volcanoes have a very, very low output. Niobium volcanoes have about three times the output of tungsten. It's usually around a kilogram or a little bit more sometimes. Let's get to the builds. Now, normally I would have a crazy amount of builds scattered throughout the world, but I actually managed to find a few that worked perfectly the first time I did them. Although tungsten has an extremely high temperature when it erupts, it actually doesn't erupt very much. Now, we can use that to our advantage. At first, I was gonna use a cooling loop and everything, but I actually figured out you can just use a self-cooling steam turbine. Now, you can do this for a few other types of volcanoes, and I'll go over those in another episode, but here's how it works. The water comes out at around 204 to 205 degrees. It uses that water to cool itself back down instead of you having to use the cooling loop. Now, to make this work, you also need a hydrogen atmosphere, at least two kilograms. More is actually helpful, but this is what you can get with a normal vent. I recommend using ceramic as the tiles that insulate this. You don't have to use ceramic all around here, just between the steam turbine and the steam room. That's what I always do. Otherwise, it gets a little buggy and these break sometimes for me. But this has been running for around 100 cycles now, and it works pretty well. In here, the build isn't really anything special. I just have an auto sweeper and a conveyor loader, both made out of steel. I put a signal switch so that you can turn this on and off with some automation wire. You have to use a very high conductivity metal like aluminum for this to also work. It has been known to break for me if I use lower metals like copper or iron. The conveyor rail in here can be built out of practically anything as it doesn't get that hot. Although I should note, until there is plenty of steam in the room, these two will melt. That's why it's designed like this. Or you can do a setup like this. You can use petroleum or crude oil or any other liquid that doesn't have a low boiling temperature, or at least that of steam. And you can actually build access for duplicates if you don't want to use an auto sweeper. You have to make sure that the tungsten volcano actually doesn't get overpressurized. These overpressurize at 150 kilograms. That's why I put around three tons of water in here that it works perfectly most of the time. If you have to make the room one or two blocks bigger to make sure it doesn't overpressurize, then that's what you should do. Tungsten actually erupts at a very low amount, just 13 kilograms. And the convenient thing about that is normally if it erupts too much, it'll actually freeze in spot and block up the volcano and ruin your entire setup. It's a mess. I also have these window tiles here. Now, these aren't optional because the tungsten comes out around 270 degrees. But if you really want to, you can just go ahead and put it anywhere else and it will exchange heat with the environment. But I made this as kind of just a way to take all the heat out of it as possible. That's also what the switch is for. You can let it drain all the heat in here and then extract it. Build number two for tungsten has a very similar idea, but I do this one a bit differently. It has the exact same steam turbine setup, but the room's done differently. The other one had the volcano in the room. This one was just a test to see how this would work, but a mechanism like this isn't actually required. It is easier just to do it in the room. When a molten liquid like tungsten or magma falls on here, it quickly freezes, but since it can't go anywhere, and if it's in low enough amounts, it'll just teleport to the closest block, which is right here. You have to have a temp shift plate to make sure that this stays cool. In here, I have a special setup. I have a conveyor rail going throughout the entire room, but I also have a conveyor meter. 
besides the normal auto sweeper and loader setup. What this does is it actually limits how much can go through here. I set it to 0.35. I took the average, which is 0.336, which is about 3.3 .3 or 3.4, and just decided to go with 3.5 units. I just run two wires connecting each of the ports. Once it's reached its limit, it outputs a green signal. And when it receives a green signal, it resets it, meaning meaning it infinitely resets it, allowing you to kind of control how much goes through your conveyor rails. It's extremely useful. The only downside to this system is it costs 10 watts a second. That's normally not bad, but if this is running for absolutely ever, it's not that great. But the upside to this room is that you can actually make it a lot smaller if you wanted. I think you could even do just two blocks in here because you can have as much steam as you want in this room because this volcano is actually in a vacuum, meaning it will never overpressurize. I was definitely planning on making more of these tungsten volcano setups, but seeing as these are so extremely simple to make, especially the first one, it's way easier just to vacuum out an area, build this, and leave it. It works extremely well. I've tested it forever. It does not break, so I heavily recommend this design. Now, Niobium is a, it's a challenge to say the least. So here's the issue with Niobium. Say you had a volcano in here and decide to erupt. Well, here's the issue. That. The Niobium would actually freeze. And once there's steam, if it decides to erupt again, guess what? It'll actually eventually block up the volcano. But the reason you don't want Niobium to be just a solid like this, sure, you could use an auto miner to mine it, but the issue is you'd only get half of the product, which is a major issue. Naturally, I decided to try this setup. It's exactly the same as the tungsten setup, but you can see this is a little weird. Well, Niobium actually froze in those tiles. Yep, you can't dig it. You have to delete those tiles and replace them. So what happens if you try this? It actually freezes. Yeah, so we have to try to fix all of these issues at once. And although we have the same problem here, I wanted to try this just to see how it would work. And it still freezes at one point. And it freezes there again. Through all this testing, I figured out there's only one good option for how to use Niobium. This is it. Tungsten volcano builds are actually extremely simple, potentially early game builds you can do. Unfortunately, this Niobium setup is an extremely late game build. You need some late game resources to do this. You need insulation and visco gel, unfortunately. I hate to, but you have to for this. And I even use tungsten as this hydro sensor. So how does it all work? Well, the most important feature is here, this Niobium volcano. Instead of just having this in a steam room or dripping into a setup like I had, this is how it works. I just let all output right here. Niobium can stack up to thousands of kilograms per tile, meaning it won't overflow, which is pretty nice. This setup's pretty common for hot liquids like magma or niobium, or sometimes even tungsten or other hot metals. How it works is it uses visco gel and the fact that the pump only checks for liquid in the bottom right tile. The pump can actually suck up liquids in a cross pattern from the bottom left tile. Using this, we can use visco gel, which doesn't move. If we spawn some niobium, we can see that the hydro sensor has been activated. I put this above 20, so it saves just a little bit of liquid in there and it doesn't keep running infinitely. You can see that the visco gel gets separated out and the niobium goes into these tanks. Now these tanks aren't necessary. I built them on mesh tiles because liquid reservoirs exchange heat with the bottom left tile below them. If you keep it in a vacuum, nothing will happen. This is what allows you to store liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. But you have to cool the visco gel. For that, I made a cooling loop. I'm using gas pipes. I was thinking originally of using liquid pipes, but that's complicated. You'd have to bring it in from the bottom and you'd have to be careful. Yeah, I don't recommend it. So gas pipes. You can use a thermoregulator, but I have another build option I'll show off in the second build. The other key feature of this is these liquid valves. Now it's extremely important that you set it to one kilogram per. Now it doesn't matter how much the average or eruption average is, as long as you 
two one kilogram things, you'll consume enough niobium between eruptions. This uses the one-tenth of a pipe method, where if the liquid or gas is one-tenth of its pipe capacity, it won't break the pipes. I mean, it comes in at 6,000 degrees, but immediately cools down. That's because there's so little mass in here, it cools down practically instantly. And from there, it just goes on through the entire build. Like I was saying earlier, the materials in this build are absolutely crucial. You have to use insulated pipes made out of insulation. There's no other way to do it. In my other build, I minimize the amount of pipes that you actually need for this. But anything that handles the niobium liquid needs to be insulation pipes. There's no other way around it. Anything else will overheat and break and your day will be ruined. The only pipe that doesn't actually have to be insulation is this pipe that collects the visco gel. That can just be normal insulated pipes made out of anything else. Or you can even use normal pipes. You just have to make sure there's no atmosphere or anything it can interact with. This is the cooling loop. It's pretty simple. I use this method just because it's the best way to delete heat from this whole hot brick. The liquid, you don't have to use super coolant, but I recommend it because it has an extremely high thermal conductivity, meaning it's the most efficient liquid to use in a thermal aqua tuner. I also put batteries in here, because I mean, what else are you gonna do with all this space in here? Might as well use it somehow. This thing is also self-sufficient. There's no external power sources connected. After you start it up, you do have to start up with power because of the pumps. But once it gets started, you can pretty much just leave it be if you wanted, or even just connect it to another grid. It's your choice. These radiant liquid pipes don't have to be thermium. You can use almost any other metal in the game. The only one I don't recommend is lead because there is a slight chance it could melt. Due to the length of the room, it actually normalizes temperature to around 256 or 7 once it gets out here. It's actually a bit hotter than I expected, but still acceptable for a steam room. The tiles. I use diamond window tiles because this is one of the cheapest methods to get extremely high thermal conductivity. You can also use like gold or aluminum metal tiles, or even thermium if you're really feeling like it. Yet again, the length of the pipes allows you to use pretty much whatever you want in here. I also put a bunch of diamond temp shift plates in the back, spaced one block apart, to even out the temperature in here. We use a gas cooling loop to actually cool the visco gel over here. Now this third blob of visco gel isn't required, it just allows me to have more mass to put the cold into, and I set this above 10. Now you can go with almost whatever temperature you want. Just make sure it doesn't go above 500. And you don't particularly have to use steel if you're using a gas cooling setup like this, but I recommend it just in case anything breaks and you have to fix it so that you have some heat to work with. Automation, like I was saying earlier, has to be tungsten. Uh, tungsten is the only thing that can actually survive niobium. If you put niobium in, it would just melt. Put thermium in, it would just melt even quicker. Steel, melt. Everything else would just melt. So the only metal that you can actually use is tungsten. It has a melting point of 6,191 degrees. So you're pretty good to go here. Besides that, that's actually about the build for this thing. Extremely simple. And this is how you tame niobium volcanoes. And we have the final setup here. This is my actual true final setup for this. I tried testing a lot of materials in this one it doesn't look much different from the other one. This one was just built to try to make it as compact and use as few resources as possible. To begin, we just have our Niobium Volcano and its whole setup here. But you'll notice that the liquid filter is actually facing up this time. That's because we can just have the output right there for the visco gel. Pretty simple. That means we can also hook this directly up to two liquid valves. When I said earlier that the pipes have to have only one kilogram of liquid, this is how I meant to do it. Should have probably said that earlier. But each of these is set to one kilogram, meaning pipes won't break when the niobium freezes. This is where I was testing different types of radiant pipes, but aluminum is my go-to. Like I was saying though, you can use almost any other metal, except for lead. Besides this setup though, it looks pretty much the same. There's no layer of insulated tiles here. 
if you're placing it in a complete vacuum, which you have to, you have to build this in a vacuum. Unless you seal all this off and it's completely sealed, there's no gas. If any gas touches this niobium, your day is going to be ruined as well. So you just have to be careful when you build this. It's basically the exact same setup, but you'll notice one thing. Our thermoregulator is missing. I'm trying something else this time. Instead of thermoregulator, and I've tested this, it does work very well. We can use the same hydrogen loop. But what's this? It's not being cool. We're actually using the, well, relative cold of the steam, which it only gets around 350 degrees when it's active here, so that's still fine. And we use that to cool the liquid pump and the liquid filter. Now, definitely make these out of steel if you're going to build this. If you don't, well, they're going to break. Visco gel doesn't evaporate until 900 degrees, so you'll be fine. And for this setup, you only need about one ton or 1,000 kilograms of water. Because of how I designed this setup, it's actually better to have less water compared to the tungsten setups. When your niobium is actually outputted, I recommend just having it in a vacuum room. I recommend having like an auto sweeper that picks it up at an angle from the room, putting it into like a storage or something. But you do need a block of some sort to update it. If you have it in a sealed setup like this, it will still update. But sometimes when you start up the game, it gets a little buggy and it can actually freeze niobium on that tile, breaking your entire farm. So it's best not to risk it and just have it update lower. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Yet again, if you need any help or have any questions about anything in this video, feel free to ask me in the comments. This is Enzo from Look Into Gaming, signing out.